Thank you, Megan. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for being here. So here I am after 37 plus years of serving what I believe to be the greatest law enforcement agency in the world. I've watched this organization from start to finish grow, learn, listen, and serve the greatest fourth largest city in the North American continent and the most diverse city in the world. I've also met and made some of the best partnerships and friendships while in office of the chief. Therefore, it is not with a heavy heart that effective July 31st of this year, I will relinquish my seat as chief of police of the Toronto Police Service. I want to thank the members of the Toronto Police Service Board, past and present, for working with me and giving me the opportunity to serve as chief. I want to thank my fantastic command. These executive officers are the best in the world, and I'm, I've yet to see a diverse as this command has been right across the world. And I'm so proud of working with you and having the opportunity. I want to thank my wife and family for standing beside me each and every day of these five years plus. I couldn't have done it without you. And I want to thank the citizens and communities of Toronto for their partnerships you've created for us in keeping Toronto safe. You're responsible for solving most of the cases that were presented in this city. You're responsible for working us through the good, the bad, the indifferent. You're the ones that came to the table to keep us in check whenever it was necessary. <laughs> I also want to thank the media. There is a double-edged sword to this relationship, but no one ever can deny the power when put for the good that saved a whole lot of lives and, pre and prevented harm to many by delivering important informative messages. And last but not least, I want to thank every member of the Toronto Police Service family Many are called, but few are chosen to become a member of this organization. This is the big show. This is the last dance when it comes to policing in Canada. There is no denying it. We haven't been perfect, but we've always tried to move towards excellence. My advice is to never stop, always listen, and serve with compassion. Throughout my tenure as chief, my first appearance to every new recruit that joins this organization I tell them, we are looking for guardians, not warriors. This is necessary if we're going to fully grasp public value in today's policing environment. I've lived in the city as long as I've served it. I've never switched jerseys. I've always remained Toronto. Loyalty is demanded, and it's necessary to serve this seat. I've always given it 100%, and it's time to say thank you, Toronto. Thank you for your support. Thank you for continuing to work with us but the utmost importance, I want to th say thank you for giving us time, giving us those buffer moments whenever you thought that our actions were questionable. Accountability and transparency are the fabric of public trust. Public trust is a fabric that creates community safety. As this organization continues to move forward, I want to reassure you that we recognize that above all else, the Toronto Police Service will continue to do everything it can to ensure that public trust is at the forefront of every word and every deed. Having said that, I look forward to being a full-time dad and a full-time husband that's not an exhausted byproduct that walks through the door at the end of the day. In closing, thank you, Toronto, for working with me during my tenure as the 10th ten Chief of Police for the Toronto Police Service. It is something I'll cherish forever. Thank you, Chief. Our first question is from Austin Delaney with CTV. Austin, please go ahead. Chief, congratulations uh, on a career. I, I was wondering why now? Yeah, you know, I had a feeling that was going to be the first question, Austin. And, you know, there are a lot of different uh, ways of going about it. So as Chief, uh, it's uh, the expiry date is when you retire, uh, when your contract is up, or it's when you finish a project or a mission. Um, or in the particular case in the environment we're in, when we've got COVID-19, there is no way that I was going to leave this organization unless I knew that I was satisfied that the men and women of this organization were in a safe spot. And we're there now for that. As a dad, as Mark Saunders, uh, I can pick any time. Uh, but uh, in my 37 plus years, I've never had an August off. And this is going to be the first time that I will have an August off with my family and uh, not sure what to do with it yet. But I'm looking forward to it. And, you know, after this weekend, 
I was getting a lot of phone calls from different people talking about, you know, let's go for another five years. What do we need to do? And uh, I had to put it to stop. I had to say, look, I, I knew that I was going to do the year. I wanted one major project. And by all accounts, I think we might have an opportunity to fulfill that. And I'll tell you, I'll be the happiest chief in the world if that does happen in July. But there are a whole host of reasons. And, and, and at the end of the day, um, you know, it's a whole uh, bunch of things, but it, it's, uh, it's going to be good to be uh, dad. Chief, as a, as a supplementary question, I know that during your tenure as chief, your health was an issue at one point. On the weekend, I heard you say the medication was making you shake a bit. Is your health an issue in this decision? No, no, not at all. I'm, uh, listen, I'm, I'm as healthy a beast I ever will be. Uh, my wife's got a kidney inside me right now that's probably working better than any of the kidneys that I've ever had. Uh, so uh, when I say retire, it doesn't mean that uh, I'm, I'm done. Uh, my health is fine. Uh, I, I've got a lot to give. There are things that I want to do for the city of Toronto for free. I think I come with a lot of knowledge that can help in keeping the city safe. Uh, but you know what? I'm, I'm a free agent now. And, and uh, you know, uh, after a bit of time with the family, uh, I, I certainly am going to work because I don't think my wife will want me in the house. Uh, we have a church and state rule and, and uh, having me in a church too long just might not work well. So uh, I'll be a free agent and, and hopefully, uh, you know, I, I get to work somewhere in the city. And what, what, what kind of work are you looking at, Chief? Oh, I want to be a politician, Austin. Uh, no, <laughs> uh, not. Um, <laughs> listen, the stuff that, that, that I'll do for free is, the, is that will be near and dear to me. Uh, working in homicide for uh, the years that I've worked and, and having the opportunity of seeing a broad range of, of the city. Um, listen, I, I see a lot of young black boys getting killed by young black boys. Uh, law enforcement deals with those symptoms and uh, I want to help the cure for the disease. And I, I think that I have a ton of knowledge that can help uh, keep governments in check and, uh, and, and do the right thing to make sure that, uh, that we get it right. Uh, th there's hope from what has occurred over the past history and, and there's opportunity. And, and I'm hoping that good people step up to the plate. Uh, I think it's time for words to be done. It's time to move to action and uh, I'll be doing that. Thank you. Thanks, Austin. We're going to go to Wendy Gillis now from the Toronto Star. Wendy, please go ahead. Hey, Wendy. Thank you so much, Chief, for taking my question. I'm just wondering, this, this will come as a shock to a lot of people. I'm wondering if you can articulate when exactly you made the decision to leave the Toronto Police Service and why you're doing it eight months before your contract was set to expire. Yeah, I, I, I answered most of those uh, questions, Wendy. Um, in, in the shock piece, listen, I, I'm still here for another two months. It's not like I'm walking off in the sunset. There's still some things that need to be tackled. There's still some things that uh, uh, I'm going to be bringing skin to the game and, and, and progressing. Um, but I mean, with the, with the shock value, um, I, I guess um, family is the most important thing to me right now. And um, sorry if anyone is shocked in a bad way. Uh, this organization is a really strong organization. I see so many great things that are going to happen. Uh, I'm so glad that I had an opportunity to have the, the legacy footprint that, uh, that the board allowed me to do. And, and, um, and uh, when it comes to the city being safe, I, I'm so happy with who we have uh, as command officers right now. And I'm so happy with the, the men and women that, that, that serve this organization and, and the great things that, that they're doing. Are you able to identify for me um, something that you're most proud of and one of the regrets that you have, something you weren't able to accomplish while you were chief? I can't think of any regrets. Everything has become opportunities. But I, I will say that the, 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 the one uh, thing that I think that was great was the Transformational Task Force. If you go back to when it started and what the concept of the Transformational Task Force, it was giving the community equal ownership of what the Toronto Police Service should look like. No one has ever done that before. And it was one of my most uncomfortable moments of picking a team, half of my best players and half of the community, different lenses, different colors, different mindsets, and we built from a blank page. That has never been done before. But now you fast forward to today, look at where we're at. This is exactly where we are. This is what the community is demanding. They want more ownership of what law enforcement needs to look like we are there, we're growing, we're developing at a faster rate than most right now because that cornerstone, that cornerstone 
has become critical to this organization and what it deserves and what it should move towards and, and what it will continue to do. And I, I think that uh, it was cutting edge. It really was cutting edge. And uh, at the same time, uh, I fast forward to now, and I'm so glad that I had the opportunity of uh, co-chairing that with uh, Andy Pringle, who was chair back then. And uh, that was something that was phenomenal. Thanks, Wendy. Our next question is Haley Cooper from News Talk 1010. Haley, please go ahead. Thank you. Congratulations, Chief, on your career. Thanks, Haley. Um, you just mentioned in answering a question to Austin that in the future you want to help be the cure to the disease. So this weekend we saw you take a knee with protesters against anti-black racism and you agreed that things need to change. So you have just over one month um, as chief months. of police. Um, what first steps are you going to take to achieve that change within the service? What meetings do you have planned? With whom? And will you have a chance to report back to us on progress that's been made before your official retirement? Well, you know, one of the things that I, I, the more informed the community becomes about the things that we have done, uh, you will see that our starting point is going to be much higher than other organizations. So when we had the patient advisory committee that looked at all of our procedures through a racialized lens, when you look at the patient advisory committee looking at all of our training with a racialized lens, when you look at the third day of community engagement uh, as a training mandatory, and having people with lived experiences come in and have the hard conversations, the hard discussions, as part of an understanding of what we need to do to serve our communities. When you look at what I just spoke about, about the transformational task force, and listening to our communities and saying, here are things that we, through consensus, agree needs to be done, I'm at a great starting point. So number one, hopefully educating the public a little more about the things that, we're do that we have done. And number two, being brave enough to do what we need to continue to do. So this is not stuff that we're shying away from. This is stuff that we're all in. It's all in. And, and so we look forward to the opportunities and, and the challenges that, that lie ahead. Um, what I liked about the protest was we've got our young engaged. This is something I'd do town halls and this, that, the other, and I'd have grown-ups talking about what these youth need. But now it sounds like the youth are there. They know what they need. Now they're coming to the table. This is a fantastic opportunity for all of us we have to move past words. We're tired of the words, now it's time to move to action. This organization's ready to go. Thank you, and my follow-up, when did you notify the Police Services Board of your decision? Um, and are, you, are you going to be involved in selecting your replacement? Has that process already no. begun? And if so, how many candidates are there? Will you be recommending anyone? No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm totally arm's length in, in a selection. So the, the board, under the Police Services Act, the board picks uh, the chief of police. Uh, this is a, a good board. Uh, they know what the community needs, and I'm, I'm sure that uh, there will be a long, exhaustive uh, process, uh, as was mine, as are many, um, and, and they will make that determination. Uh, I spoke uh, very early last week to uh, the mayor and the chair uh, concerning what, uh, what I was going to be doing today. Thanks, Haley. We're going now to Molly Hayes from the Globe and Mail. Molly, please go ahead. Thanks, Megan. Hi, Chief. Um, Hi, Molly. You know, as you know, can you hear me okay? Okay. Um, as you know, there, there are some really big conversations happening right now around the future of policing, you know, across Canada and the states. In Toronto, a city councillor has put forward a motion this week to slash the TPS budget by $122 million. What do you say to people who might feel like you're bowing out at a time that allows you to avoid these tough conversations. Yeah, well, first off, I'm in for a couple of months, Molly. Uh, number two, my track record speaks for itself. You know, the, the Saunders stock's a pretty strong stock. Uh, we have no problems getting in the octagon when we need to. I've proven that over and over again. Uh, this organization has withstood every single type of challenge that has come our way. It'll continue to come our way. Uh, when we talk about the uh, uh, taking funds away from, from the uh, law enforcement, um, if we get it right, if we get it right, then there needs to be other agencies that satisfy the needs of the community. In the absence of that, things will not work. It's as simple as that. Whether I like it or not, or whether you like it or not, the amount of shootings that are out there are high, the numbers of guns that are out there are high. When we look at all of the various issues across the, 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 this city, this urban city, and we talk to the symptom and the causes again, uh, 
we're talking about housing issues, we're talking about economics, we're talking about education, we're talking about schooling, a whole host of things that need to be put into place. And it's not just programs, it's the right programs. My Stream, My Lane deals with gun violence, deals with street gangs. And, and right now, until that gets under control, and there are hardly any programs that speak to high-risk criminality, high-risk symptoms. And so just the cut isn't necessarily the best thing. However, there needs to be a much fulsome discussion. But I'll also talk about our history. There was never any time in history where this organization did a zero budget increase, or zero. We remained at zero, we flatlined it two years, we changed our delivery models, we did a whole host of things through the modernization plan to still create the proper service of delivery and also yeah. for the opportunity to grow. Now we're moving towards technology and looking at how we can utilize that to, uh, as a leverage to enhance community safety. So um, once the public understands the things that we have done, uh, that we have been accountable for everything that we have spent to the best of our ability, and we'll continue to think that way. And we bring the community in when it comes to those budget discussions. So, you know, let's all get to the table. Let's have those discussions and let's see what Toronto says with respect to that. Thanks, Chief. And as a follow-up, part of the motion that I mentioned, um, it also calls on the Toronto Police Services Board to provide a line-by-line -line accounting of the 2021 budget request. You know, you just mentioned the, the, the need for the public to maybe be aware of, of um, you know, what it is you're doing. What's your response to that? Do you think, you know, should city council and the public be able to see a line-by-line -line breakdown of, of how police are spending this money? Well, I'm not going to get to the minutia of that. I'm sure that that discussion will be had and I'll be speaking and reporting to my board on what the next steps are. But, you know, let's, again, let, let's speak to the value versus cost debate. And, and figure out which one is more important. And these are the discussions that had to be made. Uh, I can appreciate that City Hall has to be accountable for all of the tax dollars for all Torontonians, and they have to make some strategic decisions on what they need to do. I report to the board, and the board reports to the city. So at the end of the day, my accountability rests in, in the chair and rests in the board when it comes to decisions of those natures, and, and, and hopefully uh, listen, we'll get it right. The bottom line, though, is that we're listening to the community. If you've got an issue, you've got a concern, then let's sit down, let's have an informed discussion, not a knee-jerk discussion, but an informed discussion on where funds should be allocated. I certainly will be making a pitch on what Toronto police needs and why they need it with respect to community safety and with respect to all of the issues that I'm responsible for as Office of the Chief. Thanks, Molly. We're next going to Momin Kreshi from 680 News. Momin, please go ahead. Moment, are you there? Okay, we'll come back to Moment. Are there any other questions? Okay, Chief, okay. any last words? Thank you, Toronto. Look forward to working with you for the next two months. Thank you. Thanks very much, everybody.